Hello. I'm going to be talking to you about why students shouldn't have the vote in the towns where they are studying. And I'm going to be making a case using Bristol Council as, uh, as an example of what's wrong with the situation. Before I get onto that, I'm telling, I'm going to tell you, I am Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitchute, and Minds. I let you know when I've uploaded a new video on Twitter, Gab, and Parlor. I am on Twitter, Gab, and Parlor, where I am at Granny Opterix, and uh, it's worth your while to subscribe to one of those because YouTube tends to be a bit sloppy about letting people know when I've uploaded a video. So I always uh, let you know separately. And the other thing is uh, you can help my channel by liking, by sharing and by subscribing. Sometime during the video, if you like this, click that like button or do it now. And you can help uh, uh, in another way. You can help me financially, buy me a coffee or one of the links below. Right, now I'm going to start talking about Bristol Council and something that came up on my Twitter feed this morning. And it's about something that's going on in Bristol right now. So uh, it's uh, from Women's Voices Matter. And she, she says on June the 5th, Bristol City Council passed a motion that declares that men can be women if they say they are and that the council won't do business with companies or organisations that believe sex is a material reality. So what's happened is that for the tiny proportion of people who are really trans, um, if Bristol City Council, and believe me, there will be operatives going out looking for trouble because there always are in situations like this. Uh, if they find somebody like a, I don't know, a shoe repair shop or a dairy uh, where we have an employee saying this trans stuff is nonsense, uh, they're going to uh, not do business with them. They're going to hound them in some way. They're going to blacklist them. They're going to try and drive them out uh, by, by the looks of things. I mean, that's not what they're saying, but that's what will happen. So, uh, so they, as if Bristol have nothing better to do. Right now, you know, it's not like there are old people with uh, not enough money to pay for fuel to keep their houses or flats warm. There, there are uh, children who are slipping under the net in the education thing. And uh, there are excess deaths in the hospitals and uh, Bristol Council is worrying about trans inclusion because that's more important by the looks of things. Uh, anyway, here is the um, announcement from Bristol. Uh, uh, Bristol Council are working towards ensuring children in local schools should be taught that everyone has a gender identity. So if you send your kids to school in Bristol, they're going to have lessons on gender identity, uh, you know, probably displacing uh, literature or the three, any of the three R's or geography or oh, who cares about that. Uh, BCC, that will be Bristol City Council or County Council, actually, I'm not sure, uh, now intends to transform their motion, motion, I don't know what that means, into two gender identity ideology policies. I don't know what that means either. And I very much doubt that they do either, because this is one of those situations where you get people who aren't really thinking and they they come up with a lot of good words and stuff and and make people you know to convince themselves that they're actually doing something here so there's this this is the trans inclusion and gender identity policy consultation and this consultation has now concluded updates on the next steps can be found at the bottom of the page Bristol City Council is developing a new policy to provide clarity on how best to support trans and gender diverse service users and citizens. Look, as I keep on saying, people who are genuinely uh, swapping uh, apparent gender, 
uh, say, a man who, t who goes through all the operations and all the psychological tests and the hormone treatments and everything in order to resemble a woman is still not a woman. But I'm perfectly happy to accept them, uh, uh, the, such people as members of society, to treat them as women because in general, if they've gone through all of that stuff, uh, they look like women, perhaps slightly masculine women, but still like women. And they, uh, and, and that's fine. But what we're t talking about here is not those people. It's the people who, uh, well, basically men in skirts who say they're women, uh, put on a, a lot of makeup and a wig and then uh, go into uh, women's changing rooms and uh, school lavatories, girls' lavatories. Uh, uh, that, that sort of thing. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about. And then it says here, why are we consulting? Uh, we've committed publishing a new policy. Committed, well, they've certainly committed something, but I think here they mean to publishing a new policy. as part of, And as part of our process, we're consulting to make sure we're hearing all voices. Why do I have the horrible impression that... Um, the voices they're hearing are the voices inside their own head. All right, let's just go back to the to the Twitter feed here, uh, because there are a couple of points here that um, that I really want to draw to your attention. Uh, so, women's voices matter says that Bristol Council are acting unlawfully by not adhering to the public sector equality duty. Uh, therefore, they're in breach of the Equality Act 2010. I don't know anything about the Equality Act. Uh, no equality impact assessment accompanied the motion. And I don't know what that means either. But there is a point down here that I, I do understand. There is no evidence of consultation with representatives of Bristol's diverse communities. Right, so there's no evidence that they actually made any reports in this so-called consultation. Now, either they didn't actually do the consultation or they did it but didn't keep records, which is even worse. So this is really sloppy governance, isn't it? And then there's no evidence of consultation with people who hold protected characteristics. And this is really uh, ironic. People who have protected characteristics are some ethnic minorities, particularly Muslims. All right, so we have a situation here where uh, they apparently have not been holding consultations with Muslim families or girls who might feel uncomfortable about men in skirts coming into their changing rooms and lavatories. And uh, the ironic thing is that do you think Muslim girls are any the more to be listen to in a situation like that than non-Muslim girls who also will feel very uncomfortable about men in their changing rooms. Uh, this is the whole thing uh, that she has to bring up the idea of protected characteristics being listened to. Uh, but the fact is women should be listened to, but women in general are not protected just certain parts of uh, of the female population, certain parts that hold certain religious faiths. But the, uh, the fact is that because they didn't consult or apparently didn't consult uh, protected characteristics with people who had protected characteristics, then uh, they are against the law. And it says here, local government is incorporating policies which breach existing law and erode the rights of women and children. And they're saying, OK, so here, similar motions also passed in South Oxfordshire, Oxford, Manchester, Norwich, Cambridge, Leeds, Trafford and East Ayrshire. So it's going on all over the place. Now, I just want to point a couple of things out to you about the vote. And I have spoken about voting populations before, haven't I? Well, I'm just going to talk about the voting population of, let's just stick to Bristol. But if you notice Oxford, Manchester, Cambridge, Leeds, 
Uh, they, these are places with very large universities and I, I, the others too, but you might recognize those. Very large universities and consequently a very large student population. And uh, let's just uh, see if I can find this. Okay, so here is Bristol Council. And we can see here 24 Green councillors, 24 Labour councillors, 14 Conservative, 6 Liberal Democrats and a, a local party called Knoll Community Party 2. So the, and, and the Green and the Labour seem to uh, vote together on many occasions. So we have here a huge majority of Green uh, and Labour and, and Green are, they've frequently been called watermelons, haven't they? You know, green on the outside, red on the inside. And there is this tendency in any socialist party and any Green party to rely on dictating uh, to people what they should be doing and thinking rather than uh, democratic voting. And uh, let's see, there was something I wanted. Oh dear, I think I've lost it. Hang on, I might have to cut this while I search for something. Here we are. Population of Bristol, uh, November 2019. Uh, population characteristics. The number of full-time students uh, aged 18 and over living in Bristol during term time has increased by just over 10,000. From 25,573 to 35,638, students may, now make up 8.3% of the total population of Bristol. So it's only 8.3%. Uh, that was in um, 2011. I would suppose it's about 9% now, uh, but you know, that's just a guess. But they are concentrated in these areas here. So let's just look. There are uh, areas, let's sort of look at the voting patterns. Uh, Central, Cottom, Clifton Down, Hot Wells and Harborside, and Clifton. Okay, now there are concentrations in other areas, but they're, they're, they're not significant. Right, let's just have a look at this. Who is in, let's see, um, Central. Okay, I'm going to look for councillors in Central. Okay, there are four councillors in Central. Let's have a look. Central, Green, Next one, Central, she's Labour. Central, Labour. Central, Labour. Okay, that's Central dealt with. Let's go to the next one, Cotton. Okay, Cotton, oh, there are two, Green. Next one, Cotton, Green. All right, let's try the next one. Uh, Clifton Down. Okay, let's see Clifton Down. Clifton Down. There are two there, let's see. Clifton Down, Green. What a surprise. Uh, Clifton Down, Green. I'll just go for one more. Um, Oh, uh, well, Clifton, no, I'll tell you what, I'll do just Clifton and we'll see. Okay, let's, so there are four uh, for Clifton and that's uh, one. Clifton down is green, we've, we've already done that. Clifton is green. Next one, Clifton down is green. And the fourth one, Clifton is green. So both Clifton and Clifton Down, they're green. I think there was one Labour in there, wasn't there? And let's just uh, have a look at Hot Wells. There's just one, Hot Wells, Liberal Democrat. Okay, right. 
not a single conservative among them. Now, there, there are some, a couple of areas where there, there aren't quite that many, but you can sort of get, you get the picture. Student votes in these towns are skewing the, uh, the electoral process uh, with student ideas. There's nothing wrong with student ideas, but these students are not living in the town permanently, most of them. They're from other places. They come in, they establish residence as students, and then they go away. They get jobs in London, in uh, Glasgow, in, in America. They are not, they have no, few, most of them don't have a future in Bristol. And yet they are laying down the law for, um, uh, for the rest of Bristol's population and the people who are uh, sending their children to school, which students in general are not doing. And this is grossly unfair and it definitely needs to be looked at. It needs to be dealt with. Students should not have a vote in the towns where they're studying unless that's where their family home is. They just should not have the vote in those towns. They may, uh, I'm not saying they shouldn't be, they should be disenfranchised. They can have a vote in their hometown, but not in the university towns because they are skewing the democratic process. And, you know, students have all these wild ideas and I had the same, it's not like I do not know how students are. I was a student and I did have wild ideas and then harsh reality uh, of uh, marriage, a family, uh, earning a living, all that sort of thing. Suddenly uh, it was the bucket of cold water uh, that told me that although some of my ideas were great and good and, uh, and, and ideal and all the rest of it, there are things that are simply not realistic. So uh, that, that's it. That's, uh, that's the... <sighs> That's the problem that Britain has at the moment, and it's a problem that some politician should deal with. OK, well, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and T-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.